What was that tipping point though? For, where y'all went from hungry artists to having y'all way in the game. What was that that you think changed everything from that point over? I think, you know, people would say, you know, maybe, you know, like could about it movie came, Ice Cream Man, you know, T R U albums, Downside Hustlers. But for me personally, when P did Ghetto D, mm. you know, for me working on Ghetto D and when he decided to do those color covers. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and I think we listening to him and we listening to him in a way where this is a dude that's always hungry. Yeah. But he acting like this is the only chance ever. Mm. He in there working, man. And and the songs he was coming up with, the, you know, and you just sitting there. And, and I remember we had this meeting and we had a meeting when Ghetto D was done. Right. And it's funny, but it's, it's it was serious and real. It was like we sitting in the room in California, and he was like, "Look, man, I, I love all y'all, appreciate y'all, thank y'all." And he going around giving envelopes, right? Mm. So motherfuckers open the envelope, trying to look, man, go ahead. <laughs> right? So he just gave, and I'm like, "That's when you start looking like." He just gave me this type of money, man. What, what what's going on with that album? <laughs> like what you know? Because he had an awesome deal when he turned in the album. You got. Paid, you know, like off what you said. You were shipping out five hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. So whatever deal you had with him, like I had fifty fifty, and I own my publishing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Fifty fifty, the masters, whatever with him. You know that's the type of deal he he gave us. You know what I'm saying? And you know, I know me and a few others. You know, but and you know, you sitting back and and you were like, okay, so now he gonna get ten dollars times two hundred and fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. No, do numbers. <laughs> Come that's on. his check up front, and yep. then. He giving you yours right then and there. So, you know, and I think with Ghetto D, and he gave us these checks, and I'm like, what? You know, you like, what's going on? And he just, you know, I think I remember catching him that night, and he was like, man, sir, we was on our way to the airport, and he was like, he said, bro, we about to hurt him. (laughs) And and that's when he, whenever he was about to do something big that he didn't really tell us, because he'll go do stuff and come back and, I remember with the substitute movie contract, um, so he came back and he left and he come back and he like gave me a tank, me and C some new tanks or whatever. It was like ten grand. He was like, hey, "Go to Carlos, man. Y'all need to do a song for this movie, son." So I'm like, "All right, we're just gonna do a song for a movie." Next thing you know, I was song bang him up on the on the side of the single. Mac Ten was on the other Mac <laughs> Miami Lights, and you like we on a movie soundtrack, like that you dream about. Yeah. But with this, with Ghetto D, he had a different he. And P is the type of person, man. P, P, like I see him now with with the Rolls Royce truck, whatever it is, the Maybach truck or whatever, Rolls Royce truck or whatever. P used to drive a dually, dog. He didn't care about that dually truck, like a brand new. One. He had the Rolls Royces and the, yeah. and the Royce that might have been gifts to him. Yeah. He didn't worry about all that. Me and C used to stick the keys and, and drive his car. We put more miles on his on his Ferraris than him, you know. <laughs> be, you know, but. He was that type of person. I remember they gave him a Ferrari, no, a Rolls Royce. And on the set, I got the hookup. He laughed and joked with the people from Broadway. Yeah, da, da, you know, and thank you, man. Took a few pictures, da, 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 da. And then got back to said, man, let's get back on the set, do what we got to do. Turn around, gave the keys to me and see. We going up Sunset Boulevard. You know, <laughs> you know cause we was young. And then he would tell us about it. Like, yeah. bro, why y'all did that? But y'all got to make them see. They ain't got, they gonna feel you. Make people feel you. They don't need to see you. Then they gonna see you. Make them feel you. Mm. And he, he always taught us lessons, man. But Ghetto D for me, you know, but I think the moment, and i quick before you go to the next I'll question, you. that moment, and God rest the dead, man, a great, I, the night, you know, Pac was gone. Mm-hmm. And we doing a show in Cleveland. And West Side Connection was the headliners. Scarface was before them. And we was there, and, and I remember Face, who's, you know, that's my idol. Yeah. He didn't want, you know, he wanted everybody to move off that side. And, he, you know, and I remember P just looking like, okay. We, we had never been in this position where where anybody wanted us to have to move out the way so they could come. And it wasn't in a bad way. It yeah. Was, it was because, you know, he loved Face, you know, but yeah. it was like, you know, it wasn't Face. I think it was security, not Face. I won't correct that. And he was like, okay. And we went out there, and it was in front 11,000, 17,000 in Gun Arena, the old Cleveland. And we rocked it. And it was like, then when West Side Connection came on, they were still screaming about No Limit. Yeah. And we just sat there looking. And at the same time, the news came through that Biggie was killed. Mm. And he was one of my favorite artists. And Mia had met him, was cool. 
with him and everything. So now I'm sitting there like, we lost Pac and we lost Biggie. And we remember that night because, to me, Biggie was that last gi- that giant. Pac was the one giant. Biggie was the other giant at yeah. that time. And so now Pac gone. Biggie gone. And when people say, oh, man, when, them, when they died, y'all came up. No, we was already coming. Yeah. We was in front 17,000. Mm-hmm. And they chanting our name. And you just looking like this crazy. And then Biggie gone. And you like that next morning. And we in the airport. Like, he was like, I told y'all this game is not a game. We don't beef, you know. On records, real men don't 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 talk about another man on the records. When you see each other, you deal with it in that way, you know. And and he was like, man, we got to get it. Mm-hmm. And that was that that moment for me, like, wow, you know. But Ghetto D was where you like, it's about to be over. And when he look at you and he says, it's over, so everything's about to be over. And you know, and you just sitting there like, okay, you know. And he did the the six in the morning. Mm. Ice T song redid that, yeah, and shot that video. Then he did four three two one with with LL the remix, and now you on the song with my 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 one of my idols, and you killing the song. Mm. And I saw how much he got paid for it. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's over now. It's it's over, man.